As someone that reviews running equipment for a living, I'm privileged to test and use some of the most expensive, most bespoke running equipment out there on the market. But today, I wanna to talk to you guys about the generics that I can't run without. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I review a lot of running shoes, equipment, and apparel. And today what I wanna talk about is some of the no-name generic stuff that you guys have been asking me about but that I typically will answer, oh, it's just some generic thing that I got off Amazon. Now, Amazon is not my favorite place but sometimes it is the only place where I can find some of these things. So I will post links to them down in the description below and they are affiliate links so I will get a kickback if you buy stuff through those links but it doesn't change the price for you guys and Amazon and none of the brands that I'm working with here know that I'm making video and no one's paying me to otherwise make this video. So that's the disclosure for all of the products that I'm gonna talk about today. I buy all this stuff myself many times over and it's stuff that I actually use on a regular if not daily basis. All right, first let's talk about the thing that I get asked about the most. I run with a GoPro for every single run and every single race. If I'm running, I'm running with a GoPro and a lot of times you guys ask me about my selfie stick. And the way that I use it is, it's for the most part compacted down, but when I do wanna take a clip, I will uh, extend it and either I'm taking uh, some footage of myself or maybe I'm flipping around down and taking some footage of my feet, otherwise the shoes that I'm testing. Um, but this is just a generic selfie stick and it's just extendable selfie stick when I'm done using it I twist it and then compact it down and then you twist it the other way to lock it and then I most of the time I'm running it with it like this it's something that uh, I got on Amazon I don't know the brand name of it but I will post a link to it in the description down below uh, and it's something that it's cheap enough that I have you know multiple of them on hand kind of at all times in case I lose one or break one um, that's just something that I always have multiple of. Uh, people ask me which GoPro selfie stick that I'm using and I love my GoPro. I'm a diehard GoPro user. I love the cameras. I think all of their accessories are overbuilt and way too heavy so I don't ever use any GoPro selfie sticks. I just buy the generic one on Amazon. Now the next thing that I'll talk about is not something that any of you guys have really asked me about specifically but I think it's because you guys don't know that I'm actually using it. So I mentioned that I run with a GoPro all the time but I also do a lot of vlogging with this GoPro as well and when I'm vlogging like say I'm walking through the airport and I'm doing like some travel vlogging I'm not going to walk around with it like this. It's gonna draw too much attention. Plus it's just cumbersome for kind of like walking around. So that's where I will use this alligator clip. Now this alligator clip, it has like a very strong spring attached to it and there's grippy parts on here. It's meant to kind of attach to your backpack straps but I don't like it as a backpack mount because it's still just bounces way too much to be usable. I mean, it can rotate and stuff like that, so that way you can have it on the backpack, but I never actually rotate this thing. The way that I use it is like this. I will put my GoPro on the top of it, and now it's about the size, at least height-wise, as a phone, and I can hold onto it like this, and it makes it really easy as I'm walking through the airport to just click it on, start talking to it like this. Makes it really nice and easy. I can talk and show you guys me, or I can show what's going on behind me, or I can show you guys what's going on in terms of my point of view. And then when I'm done, the hit the quick capture shutter button again, and then this goes right into a pants pocket or into a side pocket onto the backpack where I could just drop it in. And it's nice and small, makes it very easy for like getting it out of the way and getting it, retrieving it quickly to get those vlog kinds of shots. But I think in addition to just being a very convenient grip or handle, the killer feature to this is that it is also usable as a stand. So a lot of times when I am out vlogging, uh, I will set it up like this so that way I can either put it on the ground and walk by the camera so I have a nice low angle shot, or if I'm sitting down and I'm going to eat and I wanna show you guys what I'm eating, I can very quickly like take a video of what I'm eating, show you the food uh, or show you like the table and anything that's around me. And then I can also angle it up at me so that way as I'm eating like a sandwich or something, uh, it's getting that shot. So this is something that you guys didn't realize you were seeing me use, but I've been using it in pretty much every single travel vlog video 
that I've put together. So when I'm running, it's always on the selfie stick, but anytime I'm not running and I have a GoPro out, it's on this alligator clip. Again, it doesn't have a official name or anything like that. There's a ton of different brands that are making these or brands, companies on Amazon or usernames on Amazon that are selling these. Um, but I'll post a link in the description to the one that I've been buying most recently. And the reason why I generally answer in the comments that I, like, I just bought this generic thing on Amazon is because these companies don't always exist for a long time. And they're not I don't think they're actually companies. I feel like it's some dude working a hustle that bought a bunch of these items from some factory someplace and has like a thousand units of it. And once that person's done selling it, they've sold it and they're gone. So don't expect like great customer service. Don't expect these things to last forever, but I treat these things as basically disposable. All right, the next thing that I'll talk about is something again that you guys have asked me about a lot. And again, I've always referred to it as just some generic thing. Do a quick Google search or a search on Amazon. And that is, um, aftermarket wristbands for my watch. So uh, they come in a variety of different forms. My favorite ones are the kinds that are the Velcro or hook and loop enclosure ones. You can add them to your watch. So that way when you put them on, you just kind of slip them over the wrist, pull on it real quick and then cinch it down and you've got a nice secure fit for the heart rate monitor that's on the bottom. So whenever I use like a regular kind of like watch clasp, it kind of starts to slide down and hit my and dangle like on my wrist bone, no matter how tight I secure like a traditional kind of like watch band. And the problem with that is that it leads to really poor heart rate readings, at least for me and my wrist shape and my skin tone or whatever combination of factors it is. So I've been switching to these, um, Velcro wrist straps so that way I can move it towards a correct position and I always like to kind of have it this way so that way when I'm pulling it it pulls the watch face kind of closer to me a lot of times or at least sometimes at least with Koros I know they flip it around so that way the Velcro you pull it this way and then it pulls the watch face away from your eyes I don't like that so I always like to set it up so that way the Velcro strap pulls down and then I could really cinch it down and then this won't move at all. This is where I need it to be for me to be able to get a good heart rate and Velcro is what works to keep things in place. Now I have some watches where I have a, um, just a nylon strap with an adjustable kind of like slider thing on it here, kind of like a suspenders type of situation. So it's not Velcro. These are okay, but what I don't like about them as much is as I have to stretch them to get them over my hand and over the wrist, I feel like this loosens the, the band just a little bit and it makes it so it can still slide around. And remember, I gotta keep it up really high up on the wrist for me to be able to get a good reading. And if it starts to slide down a little bit, then the readings are no good. So I don't love these as much, although I bought a bunch of them in different colors. A lot of times they come in like three or four packs. I got this one for my daughter so she could wear a watch when she was running cross country this year. She loves the multicolor, but so they come in a lot of different colors and styles, but the ones that I tend to like are the ones that are this Velcro where I could really pull on it, yank on it and get it to stay really nice and snug and it stays there. Having multiple also is really nice because if you sweat a lot, these will get wet. So it's nice to have a couple to switch out between. The things that you'll have to check out below is for your specific watch. If you have an Apple watch, you need a specific kind of Apple watch friendly band. And then if you have a different kind of watch, like a Polar, Coros or whatever, um, you have to check to make sure it's a 22 or a 20 millimeter watch band. There's a difference. Um, sometimes when you're doing the search on Amazon, it will just kind of bounce you around. It doesn't care if you're looking at a 20 or 22. So you gotta be real careful to make sure you have the the, the right size. And most of them for me and my wrists are a little bit on the long side. Some are longer than others. Like for me, if it goes up to like 210 centimeters, that's a good size. I think that's what this one is, but some of them go up to 230 centimeters. And when I do that, the excess of the strap like curls up past like all the way going around. And that's just kind of annoying. So you want to watch out for the length. Um, and you want to watch out that it's the right width that's going to fit on your watch. But otherwise they're all pretty much the same. It's kind of like the selfie stick situation where it's like, I think that all these different brands and companies are all kind of getting their watch bands from the same place. Anyway, it's just a matter of who's selling it to you. All right. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about isn't exactly generic, but it is one of those little things that I just can't run without. And especially now that it's getting cold here in the Midwest in the United States. And that is hand warmers. Now this is a hot hands brand of hand warmer. The thing that you want to watch out for is that, um, you want to make sure you're getting one that have two 
in a pack and that they're hand warmers. They also sell boot warmers. They're slightly bigger. They go inside your shoes. I find that they're too big to fit comfortably inside my mittens to run with because a lot of times I'll just wrap my hand around it um, and hold it inside the mitten or I'll just put it inside the mitten in between my palm and the mitten itself and I'll just kind of stay there and keep my hands nice and toasty even though the temperatures are getting extremely cold. Now I've experimented with a couple of reusable kinds before but they just don't quite stay hot enough for me for long enough for me for the runs that I'm doing in the winter. So in the absence of being able to find a better solution I'm still using these like single use disposable hand warmers. They're not that expensive. I wish that there were a more environmental friendly option but for me if I didn't have these I wouldn't be able to run through the winter like I do. So for me, they are absolutely an essential. Oh, the other thing that you wanna watch out for is uh, they also send, sell like a giant pad hot hand and it's really, really big. It's just one in a pack. So check the pricing, make sure you're getting the right size, the hand warmer that comes two in a packet. You open these up and shake it and then it starts to warm up and they actually stay warm for about like eight to 10 hours. And uh, it's something that I definitely can't run without. So those are the small generic things that I find myself buying over and over again. And I consider running essentials for me, at least in the way that I run and doing the things that I do. Hopefully some of those links for you guys are going to be helpful. If you have any questions about them, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?